we're taking a look at a brand new Winnebago 2020 Bolt, that's B-O-L-D-T, as in Alexander von Humboldt, the namesake for which this coach is named after. And this is a brand new model introduced just this year by Winnebago. It combines all the best aspects of their other Class B offerings into a single coach, starting with its layout. So the Bolt has almost an identical layout to the Travado. And in this case, we're taking a look at the Q70KL. And the KL model has your set of twin beds midsection, your galley along the driver's side. You have a front lounge when the two cab seats are spun around up front and then a rather large three-piece wet bath in the back. And this is very similar to the Travado 59KL. As well, the Bolt offers a brand new layout, which kind of takes the best worlds of the Travado 59K and the Revel and creates this layout that you see here. This is the BL layout and it has a permanent front lounge as well as a set of permanent twin beds in the back and in doing so moving your bathroom midsection in your galley along the passenger side. But today we're going to be taking a look at the KL model and I'm going to be comparing it against the Travado as we go through this review. And you can see here one of the features of the KL is it's built on the brand new 2019 Mercedes chassis which has the automatic side door opening and closing and just a whole host of other features not the least of which are upgraded safety features so the 2019 mercedes sprinter chassis they already had great safety features on the 2018 but the 2019 model year chassis has and here i'm showing it compared against again the travado just for some of you who may be thinking about the travado or comparing it with the bolt it has active collision detection which means that it will actively apply the brakes if it sees that you're going to have an accident. Active lane keeping assist, meaning it'll nudge you back into the lane. Blind spot detection and monitoring, adaptive cruise control. Does it have post crash alert like the Ford Transit? No, it does not. But overall, these are the best safety features in the industry. And as you can see, this is one of the main differences with the Travado. The Travado had, on the ProMaster chassis has really none of these safety features. So if you want to step up into those safety features, you're going to have to step up and cough up quite a bit of extra money. And we'll talk a little bit about the price and what you actually get for that extra money as we go through the review. Now, as we take a look here along the driver's side, you can see it's a very, very clean look. It doesn't have the automotive glass on this model, but it does have the painted black fiberglass. So uh, where the windows are so it helps it blend in but the, really there's not a lot of vents along this side it's very clean looking those are not the dual pane windows there is a dual pane window option but this particular coach did not have it let's take a look from the back here looking forward now let's talk about dimensions this coach comes in at 23 feet 4 inches, so it's a little bit long. It's certainly longer than the ProMaster, which is around 21 feet, about 2 feet longer. It's width is 7 feet 2 inches, so it's about the same. Now, its exterior height varies because this coach also has a 4x4 option. Thanks to Mercedes, it's one right now of only uh, the, the only chassis manufacturer that makes a 4x4 option for RV manufacturers, although it's rumored that Ford might come out with that for the Transit or they do have it for the transit and they'll start built, uh, there'll be some manufacturers starting to build on it. So 9, point, uh, 9 feet 9 inches up to 9 feet 11 inches in height and interior standing height, kind of your standard 6 foot 2 inches. Since this is a class B, uh, it's typical that there is no exterior storage. Some class Bs have a tiny little bit, but this coach does not. Now let's take a look uh, along the driver's side at the hookup. So starting from the rear here, you can see this is your cable and tank fill as well as your shore power hookups. And then down below that, kind of forward a little bit, is your massive propane tank. That's a 16 gallon propane tank, just really massive. And we'll talk about why that's useful on this coach. And then your dump station is located uh, along the very back on the driver's side. And you can see here that you have both uh, black and gray tanks. So there's no cassette toilet in here, but, 
I do want to point out that that drainage system that you see here is heated. And this is the first, I don't know of any other Class B, I'm just not aware of any, that actually has a heated drainage system. So this is excellent news. Let's do something new and let's hop underneath the coach and take a look. As you can see here, we are not seeing any exposed water lines at all. And that's because on the bolt, there are no exposed water lines. They're all on the inside. And as we pan around here, you'll see this is the freshwater tank. Now this tank is insulated, just like we would find on the Revel, and it's also heated. And as we go, we're along the back now, the very back of the bolt, and that is your gray water tank there. And you can see that black strip is a heating pad along the bottom. So it's not insulated, and it doesn't use glycol like the Revel, but it does have a heating pad. And at the very back right there, that is the black tank, and it has a small little heating pad on it as well. So as far as four season capabilities, let's just run through this, this rig. So fresh water, it's an external tank. It is insulated and it has a heat pad on it. Gray water and black water tanks are both external with heat pads on them. I'm not too terribly concerned and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about why here. These are electric heat pads, but this, uh, the bolt comes standard with the Pure 3 energy system and it's a mass, it has massive capacity. And so keeping those heating pads on, you're gonna be able to do that in cold weather and not worry about draining your battery. So, when, and if you get too concerned, you can also dump some RV antifreeze down there. Heated dump station, yes. Uh, interior water lines, yes. What does the insulation look like? Well, like the Revel, it's automotive grade uh, insulation. You have ins insulation on the floor, the ceiling, and you can get dual paned windows as optional. Again, that's not on this coach. And then as far as heating source for energy, it's a massive 16 gallons of propane. And keep it, uh, in mind as well that a lot of this coach runs off electricity, including those heating pads, and you have a large lithium battery capacity as well. So four season capabilities, yes, excellent. Some of the best around clearly can rival the Revel. All right, before we step inside, let's take a look at the roof. I climbed up here for all of you. You can see that's a massive 100 and I think 15 watt solar panel. There's your Coleman, I believe, air conditioner, and then another standard 115 watt solar panel on the roof. So two over 200 watts of solar. That's your uh, exhaust fan. It's a uh, covered exhaust fan, which means that you can keep that open and running uh, while it's raining and rain won't come inside your rig, but really clean looking up here. All right, along the driver's side, let's take a look at the driver's seating position. This is the Mercedes. Uh, which has the electric seat. So I have it pushed all the way back and the, the steering wheel also pushed in as far as it can go. And you can see a uh, pretty good leg room, pretty good uh, arm room as well. Now on this particular model, they must've had it configured differently because normally when I move the seat back on this new 2019 Mercedes chassis, the seat back will, as I move the seat back, the back of the seat will start to kind of push upright and that was not happening on this bolt. So obviously it's configurable. All right, let's quickly take a look at the engine specs. And again, I'm gonna compare it with the Travato. So this is a three liter diesel engine. It's a seven speed transmission and uh, it's capable of delivering up to 188 horsepower and 325 foot pounds of torque. All right. Let's step inside, courtesy of our automatic side door opener. And this is the view, what it looks like inside of the rig. In the very back, you have your bathroom. Midsection, you have your two twin beds. And then forward of that, you have your pretty spacious galley. And then your two cab seats can swivel around and you have workstations for each one of those in the front. And while we're taking a look at the cab, this is the brand new cab on the 2019 Sprinter chassis, much more automotive looking. That's the 10.25 inch touch screen there. Electronic seats, heated seats, push button start. This coach, uh, this 2019 Mercedes chassis has it all. I think it's a very good looking, uh, very good looking cab. Very quiet, easy to ride in, you sit up high, very comfortable to take on long trips. Okay, you can swivel those two cab seats around and you have two workstations. Here's the one on the passenger side and there's the one on the driver's side. The driver's side one can be folded up and stowed away so it has a place. The passenger side one doesn't, so you'll have to kind of figure out what you want to do with it. 
Both of them have AC outlets dedicated as well as USB ports. Now this will act kind of as a second lounge for you, but you can move this table that you're looking at here on the passenger side to the back, uh, attach it to the kitchen counter there on the corner and have a table kind of squished to one end for the lounge. Here we are looking at the galley. Those are Ram Tough Track systems, which are standard uh, throughout the coach. You can buy various accessories for those. So here's our galley. Now, the galley is um, pretty good size. I like the look of it. It comes with a standard induction cooktop, pretty good counter prep space. Your microwave and your refrigerator are down low, which takes up quite a bit of your storage. Although the microwave is a convection microwave, and there you see the very hefty price tag on this particular unit, which is 150,000. The asking price is over $200,000 for a Winnebago Bolt. All right, let's take a look at the storage. You can see here below, we have a couple drawers below the microwave. And then you have kind of a small drawer there above the refrigerator. And that's it down below. And then up above, you have two large overhead cabinets for storage as well. So I'd say the storage is okay in the Bolt. Um, it certainly could look, use a little bit more kitchen storage. This is your compressor refrigerator. I believe it's a 3.2 cubic foot compressor driven refrigerator. And compressor driven refrigerators are great because they cool down really fast and you're not going to have problems with them in uh, warmer temperatures. Although 3.2 cubic feet, kind of small, but I think it'll do well for a couple. I like the fact that there's two standard solar panels on this rig because it's going to run that compressor refrigerator uh, and keep the batteries charged up. Here you can see the locking mechanism I'm showing. I don't like these locks on the refrigerator doors and it's also a flimsy plastic handle that is, is going to wear away over time. I don't expect things like this, by the way, on a $150,000 coach. They really need to, to work on a better way of positively locking the refrigerator and also having uh, something more than a plastic handle uh, latch system to, to keep it closed. Okay, this coach comes standard with the Pure 3 lithium system. And this system is push button start. You just hit it and away you go. All of your AC outlets are energized and it's a, the most capable system that I know of on the market. Let's take a look at the Bolt's electrical system in comparison with the Travato 59KL. So for batteries and capacities, it's very large. It's 30% larger than the Travato KL, 11,600 watt hours compared to the Travato's 8,700 watt hours. By the way, you can get the National Park Edition of the Travato, which does up its battery capacity to the same 11,600, but the standard Travato 59KL is 8,700 watt hours. On both those models, it's a standard lithium system that's built by Volta, so they're a very reputable company, and you shouldn't have much worries about that because it's really not a proprietary system of Winnebago's. Very large inverter, 3,600 watts standard on both of these coaches. You're not gonna have problems running lots of electronics, your microwave, your air conditioner, all running just fine. As well, both come with standard second alternators or underhood generators which are 58 volt systems. That just means that they're gonna charge more efficiently and faster at, at recharging the batteries. And both the Travato and the Bolt come standard with 230 watts of solar. And I gotta tell you, for I've been in rigs that are this expensive and more expensive and don't come with this much solar standard. So double thumbs up to Winnebago for an excellent electrical system that is probably the best in the Class B segment and it's standard on the Bolt and included in that price. There's no upgrades because you're not going to need to upgrade it. Uh, and 99% of the time, you're not even going to use probably 25% of that lithium capacity, but you're certainly going to be able to grow into this coach and it will meet, it's future-proofed basically in terms of its electrical system. Okay, let's head now back into the lounge. Now, the lounge is kind of midsection here. Uh, and I, it really is your bedroom. It's not really a lounge, and I'll show you why in a second. That table that you see here can be detached, uh, taken off here from the passenger side, and used as the table on the lounge. And that's your only option for the table on the lounge. And that's unfortunate because 
that table is a little bit flimsy. It's a little bit small. It might be good maybe for two people. It's certainly not going to be useful for any more than two people. And its placement there on the left corner of the kitchen galley means that kind of everyone needs to be pushed up toward the galley and kind of to kind of use the table. So it's not an ideal situation for a table uh, in the lounge and it feels like a little bit of an afterthought to me in order to have a table in this bedroom area. So here you can see me sitting on the couch and this is why another reason why I don't really consider this a lounge. I'm 5'10 and you can see my feet are dangling. So I'm pushed back to the back and my feet are still dangling. So the, the benches are just a little bit too high to be comfortable to sit on as a lounge. I'm going to say that there's kind of, this is kind of oper operates as a lounge, but really this is your bedroom uh, and not your lounge. Now the windows that you see here are the single pane window sliding windows, but you can get the awning style dual pane acrylic windows, which will really help with insulation and keeping this uh, coach um, uh, warmer in colder weather. And here's a little bit of storage. Now notice that these are all positive locking cabinets and I'm happy to say that on the bolt uh, all the cabinets as well as you see here your 24 inch LED TV is also positive locking. So kudos to Winnebago for creating uh, a safe coach that has all positive locking on its cabinet doors and its television. That's a standard JBL sound bar there. And I like these little um, baskets here that pull down from the ceiling. They're great for putting books and phones and uh, tablets into at night. And then you can just kind of push them back up against the bottom side of the cabinet and get them out of the way. And then at the very back, again, unlike the Travato, because the length of the bolt is about two feet longer, they uh, put in this uh, floor to ceiling storage cabinet. So you can see here, this cabinet has a couple drawers, nice larger drawers at the bottom, and then all these adjustable shelves on the inside. It's finished nicely on the inside. And I also want to point out that I am told that this coach, which is a first for Winnebago in the Class B segment, uses no stick framing and staples. So again, congratulations to Winnebago for stepping up their game in the bolt. Uh, that means that like Pleasureway and other models that don't use stick framing and staples, all the solid wood pieces for the framing are CNC routed out of plywood instead of little pieces of sticks that are then stapled and glued together. And this is just going to create a more long-lasting, durable coach that you would expect, frankly, for $150,000, but it, it's good to see that they, they upgraded that on the bolt. Speaking of storage, let's take a look at the occupant and cargo carrying capacity. This coach has an amazing OCCC rating. It's uh, over 2,400 pounds. Now, when we subtract off the weight of the driver and passenger in a full tank of water, it's a 21 gallon freshwater tank. We're still left with over 18, almost 1,900 pounds of net cargo carrying capacity. So you can load up this coach no problem and you're probably still going to have room left over for additional uh, cargo that you can carry around. So excellent cargo carrying capacity. This is what you like to see in a coach. All right, let's take a look at these beds. Now this is the passenger side bed and this is the longer of the two beds. And that bed on the passenger side measures 26 inches wide by a very healthy 81 inches in length. And here we can see on the driver's side, this bed, this twin bed measures 26 inches in width and 74 inches in length. Now here it is with me making it. They have this cool little rack system that you can pull out. It's a little bit flimsy, you know, but it, look at that. It's got the slats and everything uh, for support. And then you just tuck your seat back cushions, bench cushions here into it. It's a little bit cumbersome to do. I think if I, you know, did it day after day, I'd get faster at it. But I wanted you to see, uh, you know, how I, how it was for me the first time. And when you put that together, then you end up getting a bed that's 74 by 41 inches. And here you can see me, just to give you an idea of the length, on the driver's side, 5 feet 10 inches in length. That's my height. And here I am just going widthwise. I want to show you it's not really designed to sleep widthwise at all. You really need to go lengthwise. 
And as I move here to the passenger side, this is the one with the much longer bed. You can see here, uh, it's got, I've got a lot of room at the end of my feet. So if you're taller, you're going to want to be sleeping on this side of the coach. Okay, let's move on back to the bathroom. Now, this is a three-piece wet bath. Three-piece meaning you've got a sink and a toilet and a shower, but they're all sharing one area. Now, unlike the Travado, they've kind of inverted the placement of the toilet and the sink. It's along the passenger side. That works out better because it means you can open just the right-hand door to of from the back door to step into the bathroom like if you're from the beach you need to rinse off you can take a look at the bathroom here the other thing is there's no pull down sink there's a nice stainless steel sink um, and you've got a medicine cabinet in the bathroom and then on the other side opposite wall you've got a very large hanging wardrobe take a look at that so even more storage for yourself here i am seated on the toilet I gotta tell you, it felt good. I didn't, I didn't feel squished at all. I've got good uh, leg room, good head room, really nothing behind my head. And here I am standing. Look at that square space that I'm standing in. Lots of elbow room, plenty of room to turn around, good amount of head room, dedicated rooftop ventilation. Here you can see me sideways. So lots of room to maneuver inside of this bathroom. Very well designed. Also standard is that bamboo floor mat that you see. Now, as we step back out to the outside, uh, where the closet is, this is uh, a, your outside shower. You can see there's nice and AC outlet there. There's your hose and then down at the bottom. I love little touches like this. That's a waterproof pan at the bottom. So if you have wet items, shoes or bathing suits or even your hose, you can stick it down in there and not worry about the water running out all over the place. Just a nice touch and then you can snap on a canvas cover over that and not even have to look at it. What are our tank capacities? Well, fresh water is kind of small, 21 gallons. That's okay because using opportunity water filling, you can always fill that back up. Glad to see a larger gray water tank at 26 gallons, an okay black water tank at 16 gallons. And look at that massive liquid propane. It's gonna allow you to stay out in the cold longer. So what are one of these bolts going to set you back well we saw the price here at this dealership for a hundred and fifty thousand it ain't cheap folks but prices can go all the way up to you know 180 thousand or more these are dealer prices so uh, you know, here we see one for 204,000. So this is not an inexpensive coach it is definitely up there playing around in the premium stratosphere so Coach I looked at $150,000 at September 2019. One year coach warranty, not a, kind of a head scratcher on that. Don't know how you can charge $150,000 for a coach and only give you a one year warranty. As far as I know, no roadside assistance. It has two three point seat belts up front and it can sleep too. Now, what are the things that I like about the Bolt? Well, this is a great contender for anyone looking for a nice four season coach. It's a true kind of more true four season rig out there than maybe anyone else, mainly because it's got the heated dump station, but it's also got the insulated and heated tanks. I also like the lithium system on this coach. Now, some will argue that it's way too big and, you know, I might agree with you there, but honestly, at this price point that we're talking about, it's the largest lithium system you can get available out there commercially from a dealer and other coaches that are competing with the Bolt in the same price point range can't even get close to the lithium system, which is standard on the Bolt. Now, what are some of the things that I don't like about this coach? Well, at $150,000, I do not like the one year warranty. It's just, it's not acceptable for Winnebago to be charging that amount of money and only have a one-year warranty. Um, this coach needs to have a at least a three-year warranty. I also don't like the fact that the table for the midsection lounge where the bench benches are feels like an afterthought to me. Uh, a little bit cumbersome taking that workstation table and, and moving it back there. It just, it, it'll work for two people, but it really won't work for any more than that. And I think they need a proper kind of table solution back there uh, in the lounge. But really, other than that, I really like the Winnebago Bolt. I think it balances many, many things well. I think it borrows the best from the Revel and the Travato and the Era, and it wraps it all up into one package. 
and I just wish that they would offer more than a one-year warranty. All right, that wraps up this review of the 2020 Winnebago Bolt. I hope that you enjoyed it and you found it a little bit useful, and I will see you all again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.